afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Spotlight on History for October 7th, 2020. I'm Mary Helen Dellinger, curator of the Manassas Museum, and I'm coming to you today from our main gallery. It's been quite a while since we've been in here featuring some of our objects on exhibit, and so we thought we'd do that today. Today we are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. We're midway through the month. That actually bridges two months. It runs from September 15th to October 15th. And during that month, we um, honor and celebrate the observances of Latinos in our community and across the country. So today we are in the gallery to feature this very appropriate object um, in honor of, of Hispanic Heritage Month. Right here in this case is a very nice serape or blanket. And that's the piece here in the back. It's got the silver ladle leaning up against it so you can see it there. This dates to the 1850s and is attributed to Saltillo, Mexico. And I'm going to show you where that area is located in Mexico. Right there, if you can see that, that red star indicates the region of the Mexican country where that blanket was made. Now this piece was likely dropped on the, uh, on the battlefield at Signal Hill by a Confederate soldier during the fighting. It's in amazing shape considering the conditions under which it was carried during wartime. Now, I know it's hard to tell here. I'm gonna step out of the way. There's a diamond shape in the center, and that is um, bordered around the edge with a nice zigzag pattern. So I'm gonna let Rachel kind of zoom in on that while I continue to give you some information about this. In the very center of the blanket, which you really can't see here, there is a slit in the center, and that allowed the person owning it to slide it over his or her head, where it would drape down over the shoulders and over the body, about down to the waist or a little, a little bit below, and it kept your hands free. And so these features um, are found on all of the textiles made in that region of Mexico. So this serape is made out of two types of, of uh, fabric. It features a wool weft and a cotton warp. So for those of you not familiar with those terms, in weaving, the warp is the lengthwise yarns that are placed on the loom. And so a vision of loom, and you can see, you can see, the, um, see that in your mind. And then the weft is the transverse yarns that are woven in and out through what's on the loom. And together, they create this piece. Now, I've got a couple pictures here I wanna share with you. So, and then I'd also like to point out some of the um, colors on this particular piece. So the red coloring on this piece is achieved by creating dye from the female, it's, I think it's pronounced cochineal. It's a bug that is native to South America, Mexico, and the Southwest United States. And in fact, this dye was actually introduced into Europe from Mexico. The Aztecs were some of the earliest um, to make use of that. So this particular bug lives on cacti and it feeds off the moisture and nutrients in the plant. But in order to make the dye, one must collect them and prepare them by immersion in hot water or the heat of an oven. And then the next step is to grind up the bodies and soak them in an acidic alcohol solution to obtain the vibrant bright color. It takes about 70,000 of these to make one pound of dye. So that's kind of hard work there. So it really made um, this type of thing was, was extremely uh, coveted and wanted, you know, when, they, when uh, the first Europeans saw it, it's very vibrant red. The blue you see there is derived from the indigo plant, much less interesting than the bugs that were used in making the red dye. So here's a couple of photographs that I'll share with you. This one shows the entire piece, well, almost the entire piece completely uh, unfolded. Right here in the center is where the slit would be. So you can kind of see it's a big piece. Somebody asked me one time, was I sure it's not a carpet? It's not a carpet, we know that for sure. Um, and then here are some close-up images that show you the center. That, that picture is a little bit off-center. They kind of show you the design. And then a close-up of the border. And you can see the detail there and all the different little dots. That's kind of a fun, a fun picture there. So we did get a question about this one time. The overall dimensions of this is 52 inches by 89 inches. So that's, that's how big it is. That's, that's a pretty nice size. So if you'd like to see this, please, please visit us at the Manassas Museum where we are open and it's on exhibit right here in the main gallery, along with a lot of other interesting pieces from Manassas um, and the surrounding area. So that's all for today. Please join us next week when we look at some of the interesting books in our collection. I'll see you then.